Crocodiles are believed to have evolved from prehistoric reptiles that lived over 200 million years ago during the Mesozoic era, the same era that saw the rise of dinosaurs. The earliest crocodile ancestors were small, agile creatures that looked more like lizards than modern-day crocodiles. What distinguished the first crocodiles from the first dinosaurs was the shape and musculature of their jaws, which tended to be much more prominent and powerful. Other physical traits of Triassic and Jurassic era crocodiles, such as bipedal postures and vegetarian diets, were quite distinctive. In this video, we will explore the fascinating world of crocodiles and their relatives, learn about their physical characteristics, lifestyle, and habitat. Just how big was Angistorhinus? Well, one species has been dubbed Angistorhinus megalodon, and the reference to the giant prehistoric shark megalodon is no accident. This late Triassic phytosaur, a family of prehistoric reptiles that evolved to look uncannily like modern crocodiles, measured over 20 feet from head to tail and weighed about half a ton, making it one of the largest phytosaurs of its North American habitat. The jaws of Angistorhinus were long and thin, more akin to those of a gharial, perhaps indicating that Angistorhinus was more of a fish hunter. The nostrils of Angistorhinus were situated further back on the skull, a feature that is not just indicative of a more advanced phytosaur form, but also kept the nostrils free from the water when the snout was dipped underneath. Armadillo Sucus, the armadillo crocodile, comes by its name honestly. This late Cretaceous reptile had a crocodile-like build, albeit with longer legs than modern crocodiles. Unlike an armadillo, this creature presumably could not curl up into an impenetrable ball when threatened by predators. We don't know much about how armadillo sucus lived, but there are some tantalizing hints that it might have been a digging reptile, lying in wait for smaller animals. Another interesting feature is the lower jaw, which can slide forwards and backwards, a degree of motion virtually unheard of in other crocodile forms, which are usually only capable of opening and closing. The jaws also narrow quite significantly, rather than being broad like in many other forms. Again, this might have been for a specific fitting adaptation. Borosuchus is a genus of terrestrial crocodile that lived in South America during the late Cretaceous. The genus is noted for having a strong similarity to the genus Cynodontosuchus, though Borosuchus was notably bigger with stronger and more robust teeth. It was almost certainly a terrestrial crocodile based upon simple observation of features of the skull. For comparison, a crocodile that hunts in the water will usually have its nostrils and eye sockets on the top of the snout so that it can see and breathe while swimming and hunting in the water. The teeth are usually conical to provide a greater amount of grip on a wet sand slippery body so that a crocodile can drag its victims into the water and drown it. The eyes and teeth of Borosuchus, however, are clearly on the sides of the skull, meaning that it was not spending time looking up out of the water. A strong bony ridge above the eye also would have reduced the ability of Borosuchus to see above the eye, but may have acted as a sunshade to keep glare out of it. The teeth of this prehistoric creature are also laterally compressed so that they could easily slice through the flesh of its prey. These features would all work best for a terrestrial hunting style. Champsosaurus vaguely resembled a gharial, and like gharials, it was primarily aquatic, catching fish with its long tooth-lined jaws. It probably swam with lateral body movements, pinning its limbs against its body to increase its streamline, just like crocodiles and the marine iguana. Behind the eyes, Champsosaurus' skull was very wide, where powerful jaw muscles were attached. It was so specialized to live in the water that only females could come ashore to lay eggs while males could not move on land. Some of the freshwater environments that Chompsosaurus inhabited were relatively cold, but that wasn't a big deal. These species may have been able to regulate their body temperature, a talent known as endothermy or warm-bloodedness. Crocodilians, by contrast, live in warm tropical habitats because they are not capable of regulating their body temperature and rely on the sun to warm their bodies. The deep skull of Dacosaurus has led to this marine reptile being nicknamed Godzilla in the popular media. However, Dacosaurus was actually a 4 to 5 meter long crocodile that was specially adapted for a life at sea. Its tall and deep skull meant that Dacosaurus was actually quite different from other meteorite crocodiles and had an even more extreme body form adapted to a marine lifestyle. 
Whereas the majority of marine crocodiles seem to have specialized in a fish-eating lifestyle, Dacosaur's skull and jaws combined with the large serrated and laterally compressed teeth indicate that it was a predator of larger prey. The advanced marine adaptations of Dacosaurus have been the subject of a lot of debate about whether Dacosaurus and also other marine crocodiles could give birth to live young at sea, or if they still had to return to the land to lay eggs. Supporters of the live birth theory point to the fact that no nest sites that can be attributed to Dacosaurus have been found. However, just because the nest sites are not known does not mean that they did not or do not exist. If, however, the live birth theory proves to be correct, then it would be a further testament to the remarkable adaptability that various crocodile species have shown. Deinosuchus was the largest predator in North America between 83 to 72 million years ago. Deinosuchus ryograndini, an extinct giant relative of alligators, was the undisputed top predator in the rivers and estuaries along the east coast of southern Laramedia a huge island that formed when the rising sea divided North America into several continental islands. From fossil remains, it's been estimated to have grown to about 11 meters in length and weigh 6 to 7 tons, by far exceeding any modern alligator or crocodile. The Inosuchus had an alligator-like broad snout with a slightly bulbous teeth. This creature had a secondary bony palate, which would have permitted it to breathe through its nostrils while the rest of the head remained submerged underwater. All the teeth were very thick and robust. Those close to the rear of the jaws were short, rounded and blonde. They appeared to have been adapted for crushing rather than piercing. It was twice as heavy as the largest Tyrannosaurus of its time and, as bite marks preserved on dinosaur fossil bones suggest, it preyed on dinosaurs. The bite force of Deinosuchus has been estimated to exceed 18,000 newtons. In contrast, modern American alligators, with the strongest bite of any living animal, have a maximum force of 9,452 newtons. At that time, they were also smaller-sized Deinosuchus, which may be a different species, living along the southern and eastern coast of the island called Appalachia. The evidence that this Appalachian population commonly preyed on turtles include bite marks preserved on fossil turtle bones. The crocodile-like Desmatosuchus actually counted as an archosaur, the family of terrestrial reptiles that preceded the dinosaurs and represented an evolutionary advance over other its kind, such as Proterosuchus. Desmatosuchus was relatively large for Middle Triassic North America, about 15 feet long and 500 to 1000 pounds, and it was protected by an intimidating suit of natural armor that culminated in two long, dangerous spikes jutting out from its shoulders. Still, the head of this ancient reptile was somewhat comical by prehistoric standards, looking a bit like a pig's snout pasted onto a grumpy trout. So, why did Desmatosuchus evolve such an elaborate defensive armament? Like other plant-eating archosaurs, it was probably hunted by the carnivorous reptiles of the Triassic period and needed a reliable means to keep these predators at bay. Geosaurus is the most inaccurately named marine reptile of the Mesozoic era. This so-called earth lizard probably spent most if not all of its life in the sea. A remote ancestor of modern crocodiles, Geosaurus was an entirely different creature from the marine reptiles of the middle to late Jurassic period, such as the plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs, though it seems to have made its living in the exact same way by hunting down and eating smaller fish. Its closest relative was another sea-going crocodile, Metriorhynchus. Metriorhynchus is an extinct genus of marine crocodiliform that lived in the oceans during the middle to late Jurassic. Metriorhynchus was named by the German paleontologist Christian von Meyer in 1830. It was a carnivore that spent much if not all its life out at sea. Averaging 3 meters 9.8 feet in length, Metriorhynchus was of a similar size to modern crocodiles. However, it had a streamlined body and a thin tail, making it a more efficient swimmer than modern crocodilian species. Examination of the fossil specimens of Metriorhynchus have shown that adults of these species had well-developed salt glands. This means that, like Geosaurus, it would have been able to drink salt water, necessary for a pelagic animal, and eat prey that have the same ionic concentration as the surrounding seawater without dehydrating. 
Even though mature Rhynchus was an effective predator, it was vulnerable to predation from apex predators such as Liopleurodon, which could grow in excess of 10 meters in length. Since mature Rhynchus had lost its osteoderms, meaning armor skewed, to become more efficient swimmers, it would have had little defense against larger marine predators. Caprasuchus is only known by a single skull, discovered in Africa in 2009. This prehistoric crocodile had oversized tusks embedded toward the front of its upper and lower jaws. Like many crocodiles of the Cretaceous period, Caprasuchus wasn't restricted to river ecosystems. To judge by its long limbs and impressive dentition, this four-legged reptile roamed the plains of Africa much in the style of a big cat. In fact, with its big tusks, powerful jaws and 20-foot length, Caprasuchus may have been capable of taking down comparably sized plant-eating or even meat-eating dinosaurs, possibly even including juvenile Spinosaurus. In certain respects, the Quincana was a throwback to the prehistoric crocodiles that preceded and coexisted with the dinosaurs of the Mesozoic era. This crocodile possessed relatively long, agile legs, very different from the splayed limbs of modern species, and its teeth were curved and sharp, like those of a Tyrannosaurus. Based on its distinctive anatomy, it's clear that the Quincana spent most of its time on land, ambushing its prey from the cover of woodlands. One of its favorite meals may have been Diperdoton, the giant wombat. This fearsome crocodile went extinct about 40,000 years ago, along with the most of the mammalian megafauna of Pleistocene Australia. Simosuchus is an extinct genus of crocodilomorphs from the late Cretaceous of Madagascar. It's named for its unusually short skull. Fully grown individuals were about 0.75 meters, 2.5 feet in length. The shape of skulls differs considerably between specimens, with variation in ornamentation and bony projections. These differences may be indications of sexual dimorphism. Crocodiles like Simosuchus may have been present at least across the African and Asian portions of Gondwana during the late Cretaceous, but in Madagascar the Simosuchus population may have been more concentrated, allowing for more fossil remains to be found there. Simosuchus was covered in bony armor plates, technically known as osteoderms. These bony plates were so tightly packed in places that they would have formed flexible shields covering the upper back, tail, and parts of the limbs. These tough shields would have been a formidable defense against the teeth and claws of dinosaurs existed at that time. Why would a crocodile that grew to a length of a dozen yards have subsisted on microscopic creatures? Well, evolution works in mysterious ways. In this case, it seems that other dinosaurs and crocodiles must have cornered the market on fish and carrion, forcing Stomatosuchus to focus on smaller fry. Even though it was 10 meters long, it is not its size that makes Stomatosuchus stand out but its presumed feeding strategy. The upper jaw only had small conical teeth, while the lower jaw has been suggested as being toothless, with the inclusion of a pelican-like pouch underneath. This is unprecedented amongst other known crocodiles and this is why this ancient crocodile was given the full name of Stomatosuchus inernis, which means weaponless mouth crocodile. Terrestris Sucus is an extinct genus of early crocodilomorph that was about 50 cm, 1 feet 8 inches long. Fossils have been found in Wales and date from the late Triassic. Terrestris Sucus was a small lizard-like creature with long legs, bearing little to no resemblance to modern crocodiles, which are its distant relatives. The shape of the legs suggests that it was able to run fast. Its tail was particularly long, about twice the length of the head and body combined, and may have been used as a balance, allowing the animal to rear up and run on its hind legs alone for brief periods. Unfortunately, while it has the more impressive name, Terrestrisuchus may wind up being assigned as a juvenile of another genus of Triassic crocodile, Saltoposuchus, which attained more impressive length of 3 to 5 feet. And finally, Sarcosuchus is an extinct genus of crocodiliform, and distant relative of the crocodile. It dates from the early Cretaceous period of what is now Africa, and is one of the largest giant crocodile-like reptiles that ever lived. It was almost twice as long as the modern saltwater crocodile, and weighed approximately 8 to 10 tons. 
When fully mature, Sarcosuchus is believed to have been as long as a city bus, 11.2-12.2 meters, or 37-40 to 40 feet. Its skull alone was as big as a human adult. The upper jaw overlapped the lower jaw, creating an overbite. The jaws were relatively narrow, especially in juveniles. The snout comprises about 75% of the skull's length. The eye sockets of Sarcosuchus rotated upwards and were somewhat telescoped. This suggests that the animal probably spent most of its time with the majority of its body submerged, watching the shore for prey.